What's up Zolo Sportsters? I'm here at the beautiful Crest Hollow Club on an amazing summer day to do a review of the latest addition to the Lacoste lineup, the L23. Stick around, watch the video, figure out if this is the right racket for you. The L23 is 300 grams, which equates to 10.6 ounces unstrung, with a swing weight of 318, making it 5 points head light, with a balance point of 12.9 inches. It has a 100 square inch head size, a standard length of 27 inches, an open 16 by 19 string pattern, and a beam that goes from 23 to 25 back to 23 millimeters. The stock grip is the Lacoste Synthetic, and has a show-stopping emerald green cosmetic. Even before the increase in weight from the previous generation, the L23 is still the heavier of the two Lacoste models. Lacoste has a long and glorious history within tennis that many people seem to forget, especially when it comes to the rackets. Now that they have partnered with Technifiber, they seem to be gaining more credibility with modern tennis players who may wrongly assume that this is merely a brand extension play. The biggest update to this racket is the increase from 290 to 300 grams. As such, comparing this racket to its predecessor isn't super helpful, but it might be more helpful to think of this racket more in that 300 gram category. I strung it up with Razor Code Soft at my usual 46 pounds. This racket from the baseline was the textbook definition of a point and shoot. With minimal effort, I was able to direct my shots deep into the corners with pace. The wider and more symmetrical string pattern definitely helped me get a little more bite on the ball and a higher launch angle, which resulted in a heavier ball overall. With my racket of choice being a smaller head size and a more flexible frame, I really enjoyed the larger sweet spot and was pleasantly surprised by the feel of the racket. It didn't feel like I was spraying the ball, nor was it jarring on my arm. My one knock would be that when I wanted to step in and crank a winner, I found myself overdoing it and was better off letting the racket do the work for me. Once I started playing some points with this racket, I really started to have fun. Because of the easy access to power and spin, I was able to bide my time, be more patient, and go for the killing blow once my opponent started to lose steam. Consistently getting effortless access to depth meant I felt fresh towards the end of long rallies. Serving was effortless, and on returns I merely had to get the racket out in front and move forward to reap the rewards offered by this racket. While it may have lacked the versatility that I prefer, it's definitely the type of racket I like to keep in my bag for when I'm just looking to rally from the baseline and be a good warm-up partner. Up at the net, this racket performed admirably. Just like at the baseline, this racket rewarded me when I didn't overcomplicate things, nor try to overdo it. Merely sticking the racket out in front and letting it do the work seemed to be the best recipe for success. Low volleys, high volleys, blocking back pace, or generating my own all came naturally. Where I struggled was with some of the touch shots. Stringing out a low tension definitely helped, but still left me eager to choose other tactics. Overall, this racket held its own, and the increase in weight did its job of providing more stability.
This racket scored well in our solo sports review. As a power-oriented racket with an average static weight, this racket is a must-try for players who enjoy grinding from the back of the court, want access to respectable amounts of spin, and value looking as good, if not better, than their opponents. Generally speaking, we recommend that players looking into this racket have an NTRP rating of 3.0 or higher, have a conventional or modern swing style, and have a two-handed backhand, but I had no issues with my one-hander. Similar rackets from other brands would be the Bablat Pure Drive, the Head Instinct MP, the Dunlop FX500, the Yonex E-Zone 100, and the Wilson Ultra 100 V4. We hope you've enjoyed this review of the Lacoste L23. Make sure if you have any questions that you comment down below. We love reading them. We love hearing from you. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can always know when new videos are dropping. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video.